Hey everyone, it's Mac and Jenny from Cruising Maya here. And we're back with another video and the start of a new video series which we're calling Doc, Doc Talk. Talk. So welcome to episode one. So the goal of the Doc Talk series is to continue to share our path and experiences with our life on the water. But more importantly right now we want to get you caught up with what we have going on in real time. Presently we are about six months away on leaving on our biggest adventure yet while our video timeline is about a year behind. Over the next few episodes, we're going to be highlighting our lives during the winter, spring, and summer following our big Vancouver Island trip. If you haven't seen that yet, we have 11 videos and about two hours of footage detailing that trip, and the link is right there above. Anyways, with a little luck, when we shove off on our next adventure, we want to be creating and sharing videos as close to real time as possible. So we plan on speeding up the story a little bit, but still sharing our experiences. And we hate to disappoint the diehard sailors in the audience, but... Our winter did not consist of any sailing. No, it did not, unfortunately. Most of our winter consisted of working on the boat. So many projects. We should probably just jump into the first project. Right, so one of our first projects was to rebed and refinish all of Maya's handrails. Yeah, they were in bad shape and they were starting to leak. We started out by removing the handrails, carefully drilling and chiseling out the bungs. Things got slightly complicated inside when we didn't want to make a huge mess but we managed to get the handrails off. After we got the handrails off, we spent a bunch of time scraping and sanding down to good wood. That was a pretty tedious process. As you can see, the one on the left here has been sanded. This, it takes an insanely long time to really get a good sand on all these surfaces. So once the teak was sanded down, we were ready for varnish, and thankfully I was taking a class at Skagit Valley College's Marine Tech Program which allowed me to use the school's paint booth, and they really have a nice facility to get work done. The first step here was to clean the wood with denatured alcohol. So after that, it was time for varnish, and we put the first coat on thinned about 50%. So once everything was varnished, we let it set for 24 hours to cure. And once it's dry, you sand the surface with 220 grit sandpaper, followed by a good cleaning with denatured alcohol, and then finally another layer of varnish. And then we repeated that whole process four more times, sanding, cleaning, and varnishing. It's a long process, but we were really happy with the results, especially when compared to how they looked before. After those handrails were done, we still had four more to go, all requiring the same amount of work. And not to mention, there's the whole process of rebedding the handrails and securing them to the boat. We didn't get any footage of that, but that's a whole process by itself. So we were finally at the last stage of this project where we installed the new bungs. And that process involves tapping new bungs into place, shaping them with a chisel, then sanding, cleaning, and finally varnish. And now we have beautiful handrails on Maya. So to give you an idea on how much this project cost, it, we put in about $100 of supplies, which is pretty cheap in terms of boat projects, but we invested like 60 hours of time, I would say, when it was all said and done, so very heavy on the time investment. Classic boat project, they always seem to take longer than you think. So because the handrail project was a cosmetic one, it was time to double down on some necessary boat work. And one of those items was a thorough inspection of Maya's engine and some regular maintenance on it. Step one was replacing the raw water impeller and its gasket. Oh, there. Next, we inspected the engine anode and found we were way overdue on replacing it. The next item we looked at was the exhaust elbow. We unbolted it from the engine and found the gasket to be in rough shape. So we cleaned up the surface and replaced the gasket. While we were at it, we replaced the elbow's heat insulating tape. After it was all wrapped up, it looked pretty good. The next item we looked at was the cooling circuit. We drained the antifreeze and found our first clue that something wasn't right. Okay, we're just seeing out the heat exchanger. Looks a little, a little gross. It's been three years since we took this out. The guy's gonna put it in a bath for two days and clean it all up, and then he's gonna pressure test it uh, to check for any pinhole cracks or leaks. Shortly after dropping off the heat exchanger, the shop sent us this video. Okay, you can see here there should have been a baffle here, a baffle here, 
in the baffle right here. And the baffles are simply rotted away. Um, so this unit does need to be replaced. So we think the baffles rotted away because we were late changing our engine zincs. A simple $10 zinc could have saved us $300. Anyways, we purchased a new heat exchanger and got it installed. We are at the point of the project where I've got everything hooked back up and now it's time to refill the engine with coolant. I'm first going to clean it, like flush the system with uh, like a radiator flushing compound. So I'm just going to pour this in and then uh, fill the rest with distilled water. Yeah, we're going to run the engine for about 10 minutes and then we're going to drain that, see how it looks, and then decide if we're going to do another flush or um, call it good. Okay, so I've drained the lines and uh, this is the result. I really don't know what I was expecting, but that's it. We're going to do another flush just to get that a little more cleaned up. After three flushes, we were confident we had cleaned out the cooling circuit. Next, we replaced the engine's belt. We've put 500 hours on that and it how many good. hours before that? Yeah, quality. Up next, we inspected the various hoses connected to the engine. We are going to replace uh, this hose. This is the water inlet hose. You can see several places it's been worn down. This is worn down to the metal, and it's like even chafing away at the metal. So that, I think, was actually right, right there. You can see it's just rubbing away. So I'm actually going to route this up here and then connect it over to there. With the new hose in, we tackled the last two items. The first was replacing the air filter. I think there's probably 300 hours on that. And last but certainly not least, we changed the oil. So yeah, those engine projects were a lot of work, but our boating philosophy is all about preventative maintenance. For us, cruising is so much more enjoyable when you can trust the boat and its systems. The $500 in time we invested is really a small price to pay for the peace of mind that it gives. And while we're talking about preventative maintenance, that leads us to our next project, cleaning our diesel tanks. Right. Diesel engines like to be fed clean diesel fuel, and clean fuel starts with clean tanks. This is our diesel tank right here. Unfortunately, to get down to there, I have to take all of this out. Ugh. After a brief struggle, we managed to get the lid off and gain access to the tank. Now we've got access, so let's see if I can shine a light down there. This is why we're doing this. You can see all that gunk in there. So I want to get that totally cleaned out. This is the not fun part. <sighs> you can see there's stuff down in there. After some effort, the tank was empty, which allowed me to really dig away at the biological buildup. There you go. We've got a clean tank now. That feels really good to have that done. That was a pain in the butt. Okay, I've got the uh, diesel tank all put away, and now I'm starting to put back the batteries in. Um, while I'm at it, I wanted to check the water level and the batteries. So I'm going to add some distilled water while I'm at it. So after the batteries were back in place, we decided to do a thing called equalization to them. Every once in a while, like probably like twice a year, you have to do this thing called equalization. And basically what that does is the battery charger like puts a bunch of voltage into the, into the batteries here. And it does something with the plates where it kind of releases like this film that gets on the plates and it like it basically off gases um, these batteries. This is something you do with like flooded lead acid batteries, which is what we have. So we've got four there and one there. That's our starter. And we actually have to keep this whole place vented. Um, you can see you got all the windows open and then, oh, look, there's disco. Um, yeah, because it's like it this thing produces hydrogen gas which is flammable and um yeah it's good to do this it's something that's kind of hard to do when you live on a boat you know you need like four hours to have the boat totally vented so okay well anyways here we go here's our battery charger that plugs into shore power and now we're you can see we've got the equalization 
going 15 volts like on a 12 volt battery i mean that's like really really high okay this is interesting it's already starting to boil i just turned the the charger to equalization and you can just hear everything cooking in there you can see the bubbles after equalization was done we put the caps back on and called it good for another six months or so Okay, so wow, that was a serious bout of boat work there. And I would love to say that we're done with boat projects, but we still have some major ones on the horizon. So if you made it this far in the video, our hats are off to you. That was a lot of boat work. Here's a little reprieve from boat work and a good reminder of why we go and work so hard in the first place. <music> Probably a good place to stop there. Stay tuned for Doc Talk episode two, where we tackle the biggest projects yet drivetrain and a major fiberglass repair to Maya. I think we'll also touch on what living aboard a boat during a Pacific Northwest winter is like, as well as share a little bit more about our life and how we make it all work. Until then, if you'd like to help us out, please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you here next time. Cheers.